Um, I'm Ann McCabe, Commissioner at the Illinois Commerce Commission. I'm in my second term, separated by five years. And uh, I will say that the opportunity to participate in this event has uh, been a developmental opportunity. I first heard the term virtual power plant a few years ago from a colleague at RAP, Carl Linville, which is not surprising as he's in California and a former Nevada commissioner. I'd say many of us are, uh, as, as far as regulators and commissioners go, um, we are learning about virtual power plants, but they are gonna be increasingly essential to enable a stable, flexible, and decarbonized grid at a lower cost. The next few years are a critical window for virtual power plant market development. Coordination and collaboration over this time can set the VPP market on a path to delivering long-term benefits, advance key grid objectives, as well as state policy goals, such as resilience, affordability, electrification, decarbonization, health and equity, and consumer empowerment. One of the challenges for regulators is how to shape policy and regulation and enable virtual power plants and put virtual power plants on a level playing field with traditional grid investment. In a few minutes, I'll, I'll uh, also address two big issues, interconnection and data access. But I just want to illustrate two examples of virtual power plants. You've heard some previously this afternoon. One is bring your own device or bring your own storage. Example of that is Green Mountain Power, which subsidizes residential solar in exchange for the owners being on call, and they have significant amount of megawatts they can call on when needed. This arrangement is less expensive than building generation or storage themselves. A more complicated example would be aggregating resources behind the meter for non-wires alternatives, congestion relief, or other needs. We need to think through barriers as well as opportunities. Barriers include wholesale market value, retail offerings, and consumer awareness and education. Wholesale market barriers include Order 2222 implementation and the timing thereof. Uh, I, in my conversations in recent weeks, I've heard several people say that the virtual power plants are going to be in place well in advance of order 2222 in some regions. And uh, someone else mentioned that almost every RTO in the last year has issued a call to conserve. Another reason virtual power plants and the flexibility they provide can provide a valuable resource. Uh, interconnection standards, processes and aggregation reviews will be crucial. A number of states have updated their interconnection rules, including Minnesota and a few years ago, Illinois updated ours last year. We're also gonna resurrect our interconnection working group. Um, other states may wanna think about doing the same thing. Uh, another issue is utilities versus third party aggregation or both. Uh, how to dispatch and when. And on the data access front, data and data access are very important. Virtual power plants will require flexible data rules or infrastructure that allow other resources to participate. The least cost virtual power plant will rely on flexible demand. We need to be able to validate data. As technologies are added to the grid, we'll need base level software functionality and rate designs to build a system that can be monitored in real time and be predictable. As we discussed in a prior panel, another way to do that is through performance-based regulation and metrics. And there are a number of virtual power plant partnerships uh, already created and in the works. Compensation is another issue. Pay to perform is straightforward. It's working. It can be cheaper than a non-wire alternative. Wholesale markets, on the other hand, will require more stringent measurement and verification. And 
and smaller interval data availability. As I said, I'm kind of beginning my virtual power plant journey, and I want to reference another former commissioner, um, Arkansas Chair Ted Thomas, who has a lot of thoughts about this issue. And he stressed the need for large aggregation of DERs to be technology neutral and rigorously measured, the importance of total system benefits to avoid, to avoid siloed programs, and the need for a common compensation system based on what is delivered to the grid and when it is delivered to enable participation by energy efficiency, demand response, vehicle to grid, rooftop solar, and other resources. So state re regulators have a role to play in shaping policy and regulation to facilitate virtual power plants, load shaping and shifting, avoiding investment and thereby lowering costs, and aggregating DERs of all kinds. Thank you for sharing your time with us today. Oh, yeah, questions. If not, we can get panel back on schedule. Oh, yes. Hello. Um, if there are any commissioners um, still in this room, I would love to hear the, um, you know, what it takes, what it takes to get VPPs in your state, and how could we, as an industry, make you all feel comfortable that these, this is a good idea, um, and how could we make you all sign off on it? Okay. I'll start, and I know Minnesota Commissioner Matt Sugar is here, and are there any other commissioners? Okay. Um, I will just say, uh, we had major energy legislation pass in September 2021, the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act, and it is spawning all kinds of stuff, uh, beneficial electrification, multi-year grid plans, storage reports, performance metrics, and many of these are open dockets, so I can't talk about them, but I think they're all going to lead to a way to help us meet our state goals on decarbonization, uh, affordability, flexibility, so, um, Commissioner Sugar, you want to add on? He's, he's on the next panel, too, so you may as well come up. I'll, I'll try to address some of that on the panel, okay. if that's all right. Thanks. All right, we're good. Next panel, come on up. <laughs>